Là, on est donc dans ma petite pièce. Euh, so here we are in my little là. studio where I spend a lot of time. Obviously, there's a lot of scenes, uh, big speakers and stuff like that, but I've tried to make it uh, more looking like a nice living room with a plant, with things like that, because it's already a cellar, it's a closed room, and I spend a lot of time in there. And if on the top of that you end up in a place where it's surrounded by egg boxes or soundproofing foam, it's horrible. So you see, there's a carpet, an armchair. My scenes are placed on a furniture, not especially on scene stands. I have the impression that I've reproduced my living room, or at least a room where I want to come, where I've put instruments, rather than a studio where it's all dedicated to recording. I really like old scenes or even new scenes. I like instruments a lot, but I'm not a collector. I don't accumulate them. In this room, there's only what I use. So this is the Korg MS-10. It's uh, one of the first synthesizers I had. It's a scene that I love and that I've always had on stage since uh, my first band Nasser, then with Husband, and then with French 79, I still have it on stage. Donc je me sers beaucoup, c'est-à-dire qu'en fait, on a une deuxième chose qui s'appelle la résonance que je suis en train de monter. Voilà. J'ai besoin de vivre des choses. I need to experience things that attract me other than music. I'm more influenced by feelings or experiences. That's why I need to see the mountains. Be outside of the studio so that I can come back to it and try to transcribe uh, what I've experienced through a melody, a series of chords or a word or whatever. Ensuite, on passe à mon synthé préféré. Enfin, Then we go to my favorite synth, not my favorite synth, but uh, the one I did a lot of things with on this album, which is uh, Minimoog. For me, it's a bit uh, like the Rolls Royce of synthesizers for many reasons. First of all, because it's beautiful. I'm not at all against plugins, computer. Uh, they sound as good as real synths. They're really no problem. But it's just that when the instrument is in front of you, it's a bit more inspiring. Le truc qui est vraiment particulier no, the thing that is really particular in this synth is that you have three oscillators that I often used. Is the bass. You have two sounds that play at the same time. You can also have the third one that I activate here. I'm happy with the song when I feel that everyone can relate to it. Everyone will say, when I listen to this song, it reminds me of this, of that. When I make a song, I don't say to myself, I want people to be sad or happy. Everyone can do what they want with the song I made. But on the other hand, it has to trigger an emotion. That's the essence of composition for me. It can be anything. It can be joy, fear, the fact of wanting to surpass oneself, or the fact of being bored, of uh, being a loser, the fact of succeeding. But uh, what I try to do is to transmit emotions. Transmit these emotions. And when I see that I don't feel anything or that it goes too far, it's because it's not the right piece yet, and it's just not good. That's the way I see composition de, in my de, music. d'envisager uh, la composition dans la musique. Oh, on sent que c'est vraiment ta patte, ça. <laughs> <laughs> tu vois? <laughs> En général, je commence souvent par so I often start with the chord progression on the first one, the volizer. I look for a chord progression or a melody, and in general, the rhythm comes afterwards. Even if sometimes I start with a rhythm that I like but uh, I didn't use, so I review it and I compose over it. But still, most of the time, it starts from a sequence of chords or things like that. This one is quite interesting. It's called uh, Mellotron. In fact, it's a very old scene from the time. So this one is not the old one because uh, an old one is almost impossible to find. There's a, there are some at uh, Jean-Michel Jarre or, or McCartney Studios, but there are no many real ones left. When they invented this in the 50s or 60s, there was a very small keyboard like this, but there was a tape for each note, and each time they recorded it, for example, if they wanted to do the sound of a flute, 
they would uh, record a guy playing a flute, making a C, and every time they would put that on a tape, when you hit that note, it would turn the tape. The importance of the composition in this album also takes us to more dreamlike, intimate and perhaps less festive worlds. Olivier Jacquet, French 79's manager. Which touches me a lot because it's part of Simon that he hadn't yet showed in his music. And as I know him in more than one way, this way in which some of the songs describe very well a part of who he is, it moved me a lot. This is my own little room where I come to write a lot of things. I come to put down ideas. I finished a lot of them here. But little by little, it's true that sometimes it's good to go and look elsewhere. And I was lucky, very lucky enough to meet uh, Jean-Michel Jarre not long ago. He came to my concerts. I said to myself, Jean-Michel Jarre at your concert. It's amazing. I mentioned this earlier, but this album is part of the heritage of the dialogue between composition, production and electronic music, of which Pierre-Henri is the pioneer in France and Jean-Michel Jarre is the one who democratized this form of music at an international level. It seems to me that Simon, even if he's on another approach of production and composition, and that maybe the fans of Simon will not be the fans of Jean-Michel Jarre and vice versa. In any case, it seems to me that he is a descendant of this tradition. In the context of my collaborations and professional commitments in Paris, I met Louis Allonnet, who is now an employee of the Centre National de la Musique, and who was Jean-Michel Jarre's co-manager. I spoke to him about Simon and he immediately clicked. He said, French 79, I'm a fan. I'm also Jean-Michel Jarre's manager. It's crazy because I've already talked to him about his music and told him how much I thought he was a potential heir to his music. The meeting was finally established and during Simon's first important Parisian concert, after the Maroquinerie, we produced our first cigar and Jean-Michel Jarre joined us. He did part of the evening with us in the dressing rooms with Simon and then stands in the audience like everyone else. I think he was really enthusiastic artistically about it and he immediately asked Simon to start collaborating, to think about things for a long time, to open up the fields of possibilities together. I also felt with uh, Simon's music the kind of uh, freshness. Jean-Michel Jarre, singer, songwriter, and pioneer of French electronic music. It's very difficult to be uh, positive in anything, in, in art. It's very easy to do a, a dark track. It's quite rare to be positive and, uh, and bright in a sense, and not dark. And you know, there is this kind of uh, atmosphere and this kind of uh, style in French 79 and, and Simon, Simon's music. I instantly clicked with this kind of uh, approach, which is, of course, uh, what I'm trying to, uh, to do in my, own, in my own music. Et donc, euh, je me suis dit, euh, quand même, euh, so I thought it would be very cool to ask Jean-Michel if he could give me the keys of uh, his studio, and he immediately agreed. It was a great moment for me because uh, he has an amazing studio. Absolutely everything that exists in the world of synthesizer is at this place. Simon is an absolute fan of amazing instruments, of the unique sound of some vintage sounding keyboards as well. He couldn't dream of anything better than going to one of the greatest studios in the world. Simon told me I have to go and record some sounds at Jean-Michel Jarre's place and it would be a good opportunity to get some photos there and why not use them as press photos. Bertrand Jameau, photographer and filmmaker, member of the Cowboys duo. 
And so we found ourselves in this slightly surreal environment with float sailing keyboards. I can imagine that for Simon it was a bit like a huge Alibaba cave with a guy who was there saying to Simon, well, there is this one and this other one. In short, there's all of this. You choose and you tell me and I'm going to plug all this synthesizer in. The keyboards have actually been warming up for a week so that the notes can hold more or less. Do not hesitate if you see something that catches your eye, we'll take it out and I will dust it a bit and then I plug it in and you'll see. There's always a little bit of emotion in the sound when I listen to it again. The scenes, of course, they heat up, they cool down, so they are never quite right. You have to tune them every 10 minutes because otherwise they are wrong. Sometimes you feel that the sound floats a bit, sometimes too high, sometimes too low. But that's what gives electronic music its charm, it's this random aspect. You can hear it in a lot of tracks on Teenagers, on the album, and a lot of them were recorded at Jean-Michel Jarre's studio, so it's a little thing I'm proud of. Lots of good ideas are coming from accidents. With hardware and analog synthesizers, you, you have this kind of uh, lack of precision, this kind of uh, I would say the uh, apology of uh, fragility, how, how fragile can be a, a creative moment, a creative process, makes each movement you do, you know, is definite. What sometimes can be frustrating, but also can be also absolutely unique by definition. It, it doesn't mean that uh, plugins are, are, don't have their uh, value in itself. Uh, I love plugins and I'm, I'm using it like, like Simon's a lot as well, but it's a totally different approach and I think Morphing, merging both approaches, the digital one and the, the analog one, is probably uh, the right balance. Jean-Michel Jarre is totally my generation, even if I never really listened to him. I know that my parents did, they were records at home. And to be in his studio after all this time was so great. I like to take this kind of photo and live this kind of moment because Simon uh, and I have been friends for over 30 years now and we met when we were 10 years old. To be with him 30 years later at Jean-Michel Jarre's studio, spending a moment there, lost in a slightly surreal place and taking pictures, it was such a great experience, it was really, really cool.